G'day folks, been a long time since you've seen me isn't it? Right, well today I'm going to do the oil, well I've done the oil pretty much, I've taken off the sump plug, there we go, I think it's a 21mm socket, I've lent the bike over, some people take off the two 8mm bolts and take that plate off but there's a gasket behind, I didn't want to disturb that, so I've left that dripping into there, all kinds of nastiness came out of there, can you see? the veins of different colour of different stuff in there there's like a little different like a river there yeah not quite sure what that is I know moisture condensation builds up and that but I don't know but anyway all kinds of little lumps of bits of black stuff came out of there so I was quite surprised in all honesty uh, right this side of the bike right hand side you remove this cover there there are two long uh, two short and one long bolt the long bolt goes in the bottom two short ones there there we go, remove that cover, it's spring loaded and I've given that a bit of a clean up uh, new gasket, new filter, nice and shiny Royal Enfield, there we go, that's going to pop back in that recess in a minute uh, here's the old oil filter it is pretty snotty in all fairness now what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to put that back in the bag that that one came in and then put it back in the box and dispose of in an orderly fashion. Right, um, just giving the bike a once over because I literally could not turn the front wheel by hand. It, the brake caliper was that seized and the back one wasn't far behind it. So I took the front caliper off uh, and it was just one piston. There's twin pots, twin pistons in the front caliper there. Um, one piston, didn't want to know. So I clamped the good one closed and then pump the lever a few times and hydraulically managed eventually to free up the seized one um, and when I got it out sort of two or three mil there was a ring of like black garbage on it um, just road gunk really so I cleaned it up as best I could it is scored uh, what I will do in the coming summer 2020 I will uh, go to Wimoto and they do stainless steel pots for these because these pots are rubbish so anyway it's scored but I've put a bit of red grease around it and a bit of WD-40 and I've in out in out I pushed it back in well I had to make a little a little tool let me just show you the little tool I had to make a little tool to to wind the pot back in it was that tight let's put that radio off because I'll get told off by Mr. YouTube here we go it's basically just an old bracket and I use a uh, uh, an M10 bolt, a nut, and you literally put that end inside the pot, and then you hold on to that nut with a 17mm spanner, and you wind the Allen key in, and it literally pushes the pot back into the caliper. Once I'd done that three or four times, I could push it back in manually. So I'm quite happy that that's going to last me a little, a little longer uh, without changing it, but it is scored so it's not good uh, yeah the back one freed up pretty much the same way it wasn't as wasn't as serious as the front one but uh, now the front wheel spins beautifully you put your hand on the brake the bike stops and then you can spin the wheel around freely again afterwards which is how it should be because my fuel consumption was going Phew. anyway there we go um, the reason I haven't been posting uh, recently is because I had a little bit of a bout of depression uh, don't mind admit, admitting that it's, it's not a not a bad thing a lot of things built up thought I could uh, keep it in stuck and after a while bang no so there we are but I'm on the road to recovery so that's a good thing um, I will go over the bike with a fine tooth comb later on for you guys just to let you see how many modifications I have done to this bike it wants for nothing it is absolutely 100% uh, and there we go so good oh I'm, I'm happy right i'm going to put this all back together now fill it up with some oil i'm using smith and allen oil 1040 uh, semi synthetic and uh yeah i'm going off to a nice little ride tomorrow so looking forward to that right okay right thanks for watching see you in a bit right i've had the old brake cleaner out on a bit of rag and i've gone round that surface cleaning off every single contaminant of oil because you don't want to have any drips afterwards when you bolt this thing down so I've cleaned that up here's the new oil filter you see I've popped it in already once but it literally is oil seal 
pops in there. I'm going to put that little mark at the top if it means anything. I don't know. It just pushes in. There you go. It's all nice and nice and home. Now I'm going to pop that back on and do the bolts back up at reasonably tight. Uh, obviously, don't forget it's aluminium you're bolting into, so don't give it wangs of torque. Right, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to pop the oil back in there. And I shall give it a bit of a wipe and then pop that top back in there. Run it. Put it on the main stand. Make sure bike's level. And between them two marks, I might fill it towards the upper mark. There we go. I mean, that is simplicity in itself, and I've put the I've put the bung back in the other side, so it's just ready to go. Jobs are good. Oops, top tip time. When I ended this cover, obviously, what I've done, I took the bike off the main stand, put it on the side stand, so it leans over, uh, so the, more of the oil uh, came out the other side. But obviously, this chamber is full of oil as well when you take this off and what happens is the oil absolutely flies out of there and disappears in that hole and when I tried to put my long bolt in just now all I was getting was hydraulic in so uh, yeah that's that's squidging against oil that's no good because you won't be able to you won't be able to do that up fully and you'll just strip the threads because you can't compress it yeah, see so I will make a long Actually, I've got some cotton buds. I'm going to stick some cotton buds in this. Right, here we have some cotton buds. Let's go in there. Oh, my God, that goes right in. Look at that. Look. Oh, yeah, it's like a piston. So, that has to come out of there. Yeah. Grab hold of that. Get the end of that. Yeah. It's got to come out of there. That's no good. Ugh. Right, I'll carry on doing that. Then I'll bolt it all back up together. Top tip. Right, that's the oil changed pretty well. Uh, check for leaks once you've run it. And uh, here's a Royal Enfield at the end of the day. There's no leaks around here. That's all nice and dry, lovely. And there's no leaks the other side. Um, Right, there we go. So that's the level. Let's get down a bit. It's still, I just run the engine so it's still going back up again. So it should be uh, just under the top line there when you've finished. When you start the engine, let's start it. <coughs> the oil disappears from the window, like so. There we go. It's, quite, uh, it's quite normal, don't worry about that. And when you turn the engine off, the oil starts to flow back down and into the window there. Thus, that will go back up. I can guarantee it goes back up to just under the top line. So that's that done, which I'm happy with. Um, it's done 4,400 miles now. Uh, anytime you buy anything from Royal Enfield, whether it be a brake lever or, I don't know, whatever it might be, you, you get a free oil filter, so that's good news. Uh, right, can't wait to get out on it tomorrow and uh, go and let me hair down for a little bit. Just uh, enjoy riding again. Cool, take it easy guys. See you in a bit. <laughs>